Good to have you back with us here on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. One story that needs, I think, a great deal of conversation in this country. And if you have uh, someone who is sick in your family, this may touch your heart in a big way. The legislative and legal fight in this country over the use of marijuana for medicinal use continues. Now, the 23 states have it legalized, along with the District of Columbia. And there are a number of states that are out there trying to get it legalized to help people who have got medical conditions. It has been proven that it does help. For instance, there have been surveys done by the American Medical Association. They've done 79 medical marijuana studies dealing with over 6,000 patients. And they find that moderate quality evidence support the use of marijuana for treatment of chronic pain. There's a lot of people in this country with chronic pain that don't want to take any narcotics because, of course, they're addicting. And if you know anybody who's got a back problem, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The bottom line here is is that we are moving forward as a society. And social mores are changing. Ideas are changing. Habits are changing. And people are being more accepting of things. But there's two things dealing with marijuana that I've never understood. It's a Schedule I drug. It's thrown in there with heroin and LSD, all the hard stuff. And because of that, they can't do the proper testing on it. You also have the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, let's face it, which is in business. They've gone so far as to say it's a joke. That's right. The head of the DEA, the acting chief, uh, this guy's name is Chuck Rosenberg. He has said that uh, medical marijuana, said it on CBS News, is a joke. Well, on change.org, there's some 28,000 signatures on a petition saying that this guy has to go. So the legislative fight, the legal fight, but now it is a big political fight in this country. For more on this, let's turn to America's lawyer, Ring of Fire radio host and great friend, Mike Papantonio. Mike, good to have you with us. Ted, how are you? Yeah, this story just keeps getting weirder by the... by the year, Chuck Rosenberg, as you points out, as you pointed out, comes out and calls this a joke. Let me let me tell you what the joke is. The joke is that the DEA and Congress has prevented meaningful research into this. And for, I can give, let me give you a great example. In Colorado, they developed something called Charlotte's Web, and it's it's all over the media. One, you know, CNN's done reports, MSNBC, I, I, virtually every major outlet has done reports on this story. And and what they found was once they were permitted to actually study this, once they were they didn't run the risk of going to jail to study it. Mm-hmm. They found that a child with epilepsy who's having a hundred grand mal seizures a day that this Charlotte's Web, which is a non-narcotic, by the way, no, no narcotic at all, they give it to them by way of oil, mm-hmm. it goes to zero. And as a matter of fact, it's not like it just goes to zero, that when they do have a seizure, it is, if, if, if they do, it's at night while they're sleeping. So what happened was the DEA, uh, you know, and the government got into this process to where they made it so difficult for people to develop things like Charlotte's Web that you put science back about 15 years to 20 years in just moving ahead on issues like this. Now, the real interesting thing is when you dug down and found out why, it was the pharmaceutical industry that didn't want, they didn't want competition. So Mm. they would rather keep kids with epilepsy drugged up on uh, about a half a dozen different kinds of drug cocktails rather than giving this one, which is purely non-narcotic, it's an oil, you mix it with orange juice and they drink it, and it completely does away with the risk of grand mal seizures in any meaningful kind of way. So connect these two. How, how does this fight affect that? Well, the fight right now is really state by state. What's happening state by state is, uh, for example, Ohio is a really good example, Ed. Ohio <coughs> should have passed their legalized marijuana. But what ended up happening is you had four four groups, but basically mega buck groups, that had commandeered the fight. It was a grassroots fight. People understood they wanted to legalize medical marijuana for the very kind of reasons I'm talking about. They find yeah. they knew that it, it helped with dementia. They knew that it helped with MS. They knew it helped with Parkinson's disease. And it's a, it's not that it's just a neuroprotectant. You see, neuroprotectant is the reason that they're using it for concussion uh, treatment. It's also a neurogenic. And actually, there, there's, there's uh, 
tons of information that says that it actually rebuilds the synapse from a neurological standpoint. So Ohio says, you know, grassroots start, but it's commandeered by four individuals, and the fight becomes about them. All they're in it for is the money. They want to corner the market, and the, the very decent people that were out there door-to-door, yeah. knocking on doors, doing all the work, trying people to get People, it's going to help, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and they, would have, they would have won, but for it. Same thing happened in Florida. Day one in Florida, legalized marijuana uh, for medical purposes is up 88%. In comes this self-serving character, take, commandeers the fight, and then on day two, it's lost. Yeah. The, the entire you went from eighty-eight percent to losing the fight. So, Why? Because grassroots gave up, and it was commandeered by these, the, you know, these folks that it's all about them. It's not about anybody but them. Well, this story in recent days is that Florida has disbanded the effort to try to get it on the ballot in two thousand sixteen because they said that they couldn't get a million signatures. Had these people not injected themselves, do you think that could have happened? Oh, absolutely. And, and it was just the most, it was the most pitiful story. I mean, it, was, it was a pitiful story. We were involved from the standpoint of full disclosure here. We were involved because we wanted Charlotte's Web to be made available sure. to, to children. And that, that, that's all, that's the only dog we had in the fight. I wasn't interested in, you know, I, I, I was not participant in the broader issue of legalized marijuana across the board, which is important, but we have to begin somewhere. So now you have these children that are having to go to Colorado, for God's sakes, even to get this stuff. And so, uh, and, 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 and it's, there's no guesswork here anymore. This is not, and to have Rosenberg come out and say this is a joke, you tell the parent of a child, that has to watch their child go through 50 to 60 seizures a day, that this is mm-hmm. a joke? Well, well, Mike, why, why hasn't there been more emphasis on the uh, American Medical Association and the findings that they have had in the si- studies that they've had, some 79 studies uh, right. dealing with over 6,000 patients? Why wouldn't that lend credibility to the advocacy of, of uh, medicinal use of marijuana in the state of Florida? Ed, it would. You know what the holdup is? The federal government. It's the DEA. The DEA puts such fear in everybody's mind about this that if a person wanted to go to Florida, for example, and they wanted to market uh, Charlotte's Web just like a pharmaceutical company would do, only they don't charge 4,000% increase. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't do these ridiculous markups. If they wanted to do that, the first thing that would happen is they would say, well, a DEA won't allow that company to do any banking in the state of Florida, so how does that company do any kind of business? Yeah. The federal government is the problem here, because once the federal government does what they should do, and that is to abandon this D- DEA fantasy that, dr- that tries to uh, justify their exorbitant budget, tries to justify the salaries that they're paying to these DEA, not even agents. These are people, these are just bureaucrats. There's truly bureaucrats where all the DEA money is gone. And it's, just, it's pathetic it, all right. because people's lives are really in the balance here. Let, let, let's talk about the politics of this. You have some allies in Congress. This is Earl Blumenauer, a Democrat from Oregon, talking about the comment that was made by the DEA chief. Chuck Rosenberg, the acting administrator of the Drug Enforcement Agency, recently called the notion of smoking medical marijuana a joke. What is a joke is the job Rosenberg is doing as acting DEA administrator. He's an example of the inept, misinformed zealot who has mismanaged America's failed policy of marijuana prohibition. Americans recognize it's time for a change in direction to legalize, regulate, and tax marijuana. Leadership needs to change. Rosenberg is clearly not the right fit for the DEA in this administration. So, Mike, where's the political fight in this? Political fight is trying to get Obama, trying to get this administration to call the dogs off. Mm -hmm. You had Eric Holder in there, for example. took him years to even acknowledge the fact that people can be medically treated with uh, uh, with medical marijuana. And then all of a sudden, at the end, he says, oh, well, I was wrong. Yeah. Well, how did the the, the 23 states did it just individually? I mean, they put it on the initiative, and they got progressive, and they got it done. And the way it happened, Ed, is it happened by way of grassroots. It it wasn't commandeered by these self-serving windbag, windbag, it's all about me kind of types that 
put all their money in. It becomes about them. They're on the commercials. They're embarrassing the effort, and in the end, the effort fails. Uh, at the same time, it fails during a time when alcohol kills 88,000 people a year. Pharmaceutical drugs kill 106,000 people a year. Compare that to marijuana. It's not even a blip. But the, the point is this. Until it, ta- it has to take place at the top, it has to take place from Obama himself, and he has to hire people unlike this Chuck Rosenberg who have moved into the 21st century and understand that the pharmaceutical industry has been has wrought just absolute disaster on people's lives by keeping this in the dark where people can't even yeah. research it. Well, we've got the climate deniers over on the uh, conservative uh, movement in this country, and we've got uh, deniers of uh, the use of medical uh, marijuana to help people because the DEA, uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration, they basically have a position where there is no use for it at all. That's pretty, it's pretty archaic, and they are setting back science. Mike Papantonio, America's lawyer, Ring of Fire radio host, a great friend. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Ed. Communication Workers of America, Alliance for American Manufacturing, BioGreen Clean, and the iSave team bring you this production. Tonight, no doubt, it's a big one. It's the final GOP debate of 2015. Trump's going to be walking in with a lot of swagger at 41%, his best numbers so far. We're back tomorrow.